Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week 21 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Day and Night Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Blood and Sex Nightmare. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one. Something unholy is stalking the guests of the Pleasure Mountain Adult Retreat. Local legend states that 40 years ago, serial rapist and murderer Felix Gallo hung himself at an abandoned campground in these woods. Today, a sex resort sets on the site, and couples eager to sample a swinging lifestyle in rustic surroundings arrive in droves. Everything goes well, and business is booming until, one by one, the guests begin to disappear and reappear in bloody little pieces. Is a flesh-and-blood killer on the loose, or has Felix's dormanted spirit, disturbed by the sexual energy, come back from the grave to exact his revenge? Welcome to Pleasure Mountain Adult Retreat, where safe sex has a very different meaning. Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's Slashback Challenge theme of Day and Night Slashers, we were simply challenged to watch and review a slasher film that featured the words night or day. The words night or day could also be featured as a part of a larger word. So I have decided to watch and review Blood and Sex Nightmare because it had been a long time since I had seen it and it fits this week's theme perfectly. Blood and Sex Nightmare is a low-budget supernatural slasher film that features a lot of nudity and a lot of blood and gore. And with only a $3,000 budget, I feel like they did a really good job with what they had to work with. I thought the movie was shot and filmed very well. The movie takes place on and around Halloween, so basically the days leading up to Halloween. The main set location takes place at a former campground. It's an isolated looking area that has a very rustic fall feeling to it with all the different colors of leaves you can see on the trees and of course the dead leaves on the ground. This former campground has now been turned into a sex resort and because of all the sexual energy that has been stirred up has resurrected a sex killer. That's about all there is to the plot. You have to go into this one expecting a lot of nudity and a lot of perversion with the kills. There's a lot of genital mutilations in this movie. We have victims who are living out their sexual fantasies. So I could definitely understand that this sleazy slasher film might not be for everyone. For the most part, I did enjoy watching Blood and Sex Nightmare. And I did want to mention that there's a couple of really interesting short films in the special features section. One is called Shelf Boy or Demon. And the other one is called The Roaring Twenties. Both I thought were pretty interesting, and I thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Blood and Sex Nightmare. So the main characters of this movie's storyline would be Amy and Nick. At the beginning of the movie, Amy has just returned from Japan from her father's funeral. So she's still going through a lot of emotional stress. But that doesn't seem to bother her boyfriend Nick, who seems to only have one thing on his mind and immediately invites his girlfriend Amy to the weekend sex resort. And upon arriving at the adult retreat, the couple meet the creepy groundskeeper Walter, who immediately offers himself and his 10 inches up to the couple in case they are interested in a third. Now, Walter does have a very interesting relationship with our supernatural killer, Felix. Basically, Walter will clean up Felix's murder victims in exchange, Walter gets to do whatever he desires with the victims. But, of course, this will push the limits of what Felix will allow. And to round out the cast of characters we have in Blood and Sex Nightmare, we do have a lot of throwaway characters who are only here to add to the movie's overall body count. This resort does have a lot of visitors, so we do have a lot of people who are looking to fulfill very weird, unusual, and strange sexual fantasies. So with that, we have a lot of really over-the-top characters. We do also have a few staff members who work at this resort, and I dare not to say that the acting is good in this movie, but overall, I didn't mind the acting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. And for the most part, I like the look of the killer in this movie. Basically, we have a supernatural killer named Felix Gallo, 
who hung himself after being tormented and sexually abused by his mother. He has been resurrected due to the sexual activity that surrounds the area where he had died. And now he is back from the dead with a vengeance on a murderous rampage. And pretty much what we have here is a supernatural killer who basically looks like a zombie having one eyeball dangling from its socket. And even though the killer does look like a zombie, he doesn't in any way act like one because he will claim his victims with whatever murder weapon he can get his hands on. And as far as the kills go in this movie, it has a pretty high body count with a pretty wide variety of kills. The killer does like to use a chainsaw, a axe, and a knife to murder his victims with. I did also mention some genital mutilation. We have a severed penis that ends up in a woman's mouth, and she's suffocated to death. So some of the kills are of perverted nature. We do have a few off-screen kills, but for the most part, I really do feel like a lot of detail was put into each and every kill that we do get to see. I know this one's not going to be for everybody, but for the most part, I did enjoy it. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you have seen Blood and Sex Nightmare, or just let me know what you think about my review. And I would like to thank you all for watching.